The Greater West Bloomfield community recently joined together at Abbott Middle School for the first annual State of the Communities, providing residents with an overview of the present state and future of our community. Presenting the State of West Bloomfield Township, Supervisor Steve Kaplan. Welcome everybody. You heard that Brooke Allen indicated she's looking for a home, possibly in Kegel Harbor. Brooke, we have four real estate brokers waiting for you outside tonight. <laughs> when you think of West Bloomfield, when we on the inside think of West Bloomfield, we think that we exhibit teamwork. Now you might remember in prior terms, prior to November 20, 2016, there might have been some acrimony, some disagreements on the board, and because of that, we ha our meetings were overpopulated. We had to provide chairs all the way down the hallway. But that doesn't exist now. We have a great team, I think, and the, we have three of the board members here tonight. We have Trustee Howard Rosenberg. Howard. <laughs> Trustee Jonathan Warshe. Jonathan. And Treasurer Terry Weingarten. All the other board members are Clerk Debbie Binder and Trustee Diane Swimmer and Trustee Jim Manna. Now, in terms of occupations on the township board, we have two lawyers, a real estate broker, a nurse, a chiropractor, a, what am I missing here? Another lawyer, and then we have an international uh, customs, uh, automobile customs expert. So other than the two lawyers, we're doing well. We think we exhibit friendliness at Town Hall. We have a diverse work staff now, and also our boards and commissions. We strive to gain diversity on those boards based on skill, based on achievements. And I think if you watch our board and commission meetings, you'll see we have some very talented people. And these individuals volunteer their time to ensure that our zoning regulations are maintained, that our planning code is, is upheld, and these people work for maybe $60, $65 per meeting when the meetings might last two to three hours and the work involved is monumental. So we appreciate them. Now for the, by the way, John Fletcher, mayor of Kego Harbor, he and I were gonna make a joint presentation, but John was concerned that my height would tower over him. So thank you, John. <laughs> we, uh, and so our board, this is our 28th month. We hope we've achieved some success. And we've had a balanced budget every year. Of course, we're required to under the law. But financially, we're in a very good state. We have our, our legacy costs are fairly minimal. Our pensions, our retiree health care, we're, we're, we're funded at close to 90%. And that should give the residents, they should have some heart, they take heart in that, which means that if there's another decline in the economy and real estate values, we are not, in a, we will be in a position to sustain that. We will not have to cut services. We will not have to reduce people's pay. And we're happy about that. When West Bloomfield was founded, we had our 185th birthday. We celebrated that on April 22. And that means that West Bloomfield is older than Dave Scott, Dave Alberry, and Bruce McIntyre, <laughs> and me. So we're happy about that. Chief Flynn mentioned the Fire Station 3. Now, Fire Station 3 was constructed in about 1965, and it's a world of, it's just a work of heart and love by Chief Flynn and his staff because that fire department outlived its purpose. We had firefighters residing there so up to 48 hours in succession, and the, the building declined. So the town board decided the investment was necessary and we might be spending close to $5.5 million on their fire station. But part of the good news is it's bonded. We're bonding. And Trustee Rosenberg and I think Treasurer Weingarten initiated the idea, let's bond some of the costs. And that saves money long run. But that relates now to our bond rating, which is double A+. That's the second highest rating a municipality can have. And it serves our public well because when we do need bonding, we obtain lower interest rates and lower rates all along. Well, the groundbreaking on at Fire Station 3, we expect it to open sometime June, perhaps, and we hope all of you can attend because we're very proud of that new station. And we're also proud 
of the teamwork that we've achieved with Orchard Lake, Kegel Harbor, and Sylvan Lake. As you've heard, we share the same dispatching services. We provide those services. We also have the Tri-City Fire Department. So we consider Orchard Lake, Sylvan Lake, and Kegel Harbor, we're all together. It's one community. And from time to time, a township board member will receive a compliment from a resident, not sure where the boundaries rest. Like, oh, you have a beautiful community center in Sylvan Lake or Kegel Harbor, Magnolia, and the new stores. And when we hear these compliments about businesses that actually are in Kegel Harbor, uh, Sylvan Lake, and Orchard Lake, you know what we say? Thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll take the credit. Now, Bruce McIntyre, he and I have been friends for a long time and don't hold it against him. He told you about the response time, and we can say to you with certainty, confidence, and pride that Approximately four minutes at most will pass by, will elapse after you call 911. So you will see a paramedic, you will see a firefighter, you will see, you will see a police officer. And this is important. We know time is of the essence, heart attacks, brain attacks. Well, about five months ago, a call is received at West Bloomfield Township. I answered the call, and it's a woman named Marsha. I've known Marsha for years, don't, and whenever I see her, I don't know her, I can't remember her name, so I try to act as though I know her, but I've known her, <laughs> you know, somewhat, you know how politicians are, great to see you, who was that? <laughs> so Marcia said to me, Steve, I wanna share something with you, and I said, what? And she said, my husband died, and she lives in West Bloomfield. And I, I said, oh, sorry, Marcia, I'm so sorry to hear that, I didn't even know, I would've made a shiva call, and she said, he died, but he's alive. She said he was clinically dead, he was, his heart had stopped. And I called 911, she said, and the West Bloomfield Fire Department responded with two trucks and they revived him. CPR, his heart was activated. Taken to Henry Ford Hospital and he survived. So I talked to her from time to time and she was so proud of the West Bloomfield Fire Department. And of course when I mentioned this to Chief Flynn, I said we should offer commendation to the West Bloomfield Fire Department. And Chief Flynn, modest man, says this is what we do. This is what we're supposed to do. So fast forward, January 1, I decided with all my gluttony I'm gonna do something nice and I'm gonna help at a church in Detroit at 10 in the morning on January 1, handing out food to homeless people. And who was there? Marcia and her husband. And that was just wonderful. <laughs> so I said to Marcia's husband, I said, she really wants you to be around. She liked that. We are, we consistently have been rated, and I think Hugo Sylvan and Orchard share this with us. We are one of the safest communities in Michigan. We have been rated as high as first, first safest, all the way to 15th, depending on which testing and studying agency you believe in. But we have been, we're, we're a safe community and it's attributable to many, many factors. One, the township board is insistent on funding public safety in a, in a balanced, fair way because we know our public demands and we have 80 active police officers, including the command officers, and I believe we have 94, if I'm off by one, Chief Flynn, don't hold it against me, 94 active firefighters. So this is important because it's the presence on the street. So why is West Bloomfield such a safe community? Among other things, it's the deterrent effect of having police cars in the area. At night, during the day, they're seen. Many of our neighbors ha neighborhoods have neighborhood safety, neighborhood watch, patrol, and that helps. Also geography, the geography helps us because we don't have a freeway where somebody can jump on after committing a burglary or a carjacking. And it's hard to navigate around the lakes. And uh, Chief Patton and Deputy Chief uh, Lawson, I mean, these are great officers, but they would have to admit that sometimes we catch the bad guy because he's lost. He can't find his way <laughs> near the lake. <laughs> and as a former prosecutor, I can tell you with certainty that crooks talk. When they get together in jail or in prison, they're not conversing about whether they like Donald Trump. They're not talking about whether the uh, Green Book should have won the Academy Award. They're talking about which areas they should infiltrate when they're released from prison after achieving rehabilitation. <laughs> <laughs> and what, and I, could, I know this because I had one uh, perpetrator tell me, he said, we stay away from West Bloomfield. <laughs> so, 
when he was released from prison, I sent him a map. <laughs> and the map showed that Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, and Orchard Lake are part of West Bloomfield. All of you know about the, we have 28 lakes in West Bloomfield. We, we are known for being environmentally sensitive. We're proud of our environmental features. We have an environmental commission. The Zoning Board and Planning Commission have some, some activity here, but it's difficult to navigate because in, through those commissions because we want, we insist that our standards be upheld. And you, you know that. You see all the wetlands and woodlands and Town Hall, you, you drive into Town Hall and we have a fabulous library, one of the best, a separate governing board. I wish Howard and I would like to take credit for the library, but the library has a separate governing board. But you drive into Town Hall and you just see how beautiful it is. So our Development Services Department recently was recognized by Michigan Township Association for LEED certified new construction projects. This is a very high standard, but we maintain and we insist that our developers follow the code and from time to time we have disagreements on the board but I think I know all of us fervently believe in maintaining the environmental features so not only can all of us appreciate that appreciate them but also our descendants Kyle Mack some of you know Kyle Mack Kyle Mack is a West Bloomfield resident and Kyle Mack won a silver medal for big air snowboarding and in 2018 April West Bloomfield Township and Parks and Recreation, or the Parks Commission, we collaborated and we hosted a Kyle Mack Day. And Civic Center TV with Dave Scott and Dave Elbury presiding, we had a wonderful event. And people still talk about the Kyle Mack Day. Now my wife said to me, we were about to leave, and she said, I want my picture taken with Kyle Mack, and I want his autograph. So we drove all the way around, and she talks about Kyle Mack more than she mentions my name, but that's all right. <laughs> Road Commission, you know that townships do not own the roads, it's roads. The roads that are contained in West Bloomfield are owned by the Road Commission other than private streets. This means we rely on the Road Commission. So from time to time, or actually more than that, frequently a call emerges at town hall, there's a big pothole in my street, on my street, and I blew out a tire, and not only do I want you to reimburse me, I want that hole fixed today. We do not have a Department of Public Works. We could, Howard and I have talked about this, Terry and Jonathan too, you know, we could seek additional funds through the millage, but I don't think our residents want to pay more taxes, so we rely on the Road Commission. And what we decided as a board, what are we going to do? The Road Commission has a finite amount of money. We want it all, but what can we do? We have maintained a, just a wonderful relationship with the Road Commission and the Road Commission staff, and that wasn't necessarily true years ago. And for example, they wanted West Bloomfield to offer some comments on a press conference regarding Orchard Lake Boulevard, and we did so. So when you call us and you say there's a pothole, we want to have that pothole repaired. We call the Road Commission for you. So for example, a call will arrive at West Bloomfield Township Hall. Question, what's the number of the Road Commission? There's a big pothole on my street. We say, we'll make the call for you. We have a better chance as staff of reaching somebody at the Road Commission. And we beg and implore and beseech them to fix that pothole. This one woman says she hasn't seen her husband for a month because the pothole's so large, I think he's caught there. <laughs> On May 3rd, we had our annual ceremony memorial honoring police officers, public safety members, who gave their lives for all of us to be safe. And we will be holding another event. I'm not sure the date. It might be the second Friday in May. But we hope you can attend just to honor those who keep us safe. They give, their, they give their lives, or at least potentially give their lives for all of us to feel safe. Household hazardous waste. Twice per year, we host a town hall. It's usually the third Saturday and the fourth, third Saturday of April, fourth Saturday of September. And last year, we had 30, over 3,000 vehicles, over 3,000 residents. And we also offer this to Sylvan Lake, Kegel Harbor, and Orchard Lake. 
but we're becoming known now, renowned, that we have household hazardous waste day. And there are people who will call in January and say, I have some paint, I have some batteries, I have electronics, what do I do with them? Can you wait until April the 13th of this year? We'll be happy to dispose of them. But our staff enjoys it. We actually have more staff volunteering to participate in house, Household Hazardous Waste Day Saturdays from 8 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon than we can provide. Food Truck Tuesday. Food trucks, you probably saw them, you've seen them, and I'd like to give a shout out to Jennifer Tucker, and who is the Executive Director of the Parks Commission. I know Robert Brooks is here, and I'm sure several other Parks Commissioners, but we've, we've had a great collaboration with the Parks Commission. And we had an idea. So this is one nice aspect of being a township board member, the seven of us, because the staff generates these wonderful ideas. We receive the credit when they're good, and when they're not so good, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but Food Truck Tuesday, we've had, we had six different events. Chris Darcy from our office spearheads these. And on an average Tuesday, I think it's the first Tuesday of the month, the vendor will sell about $1,000 worth of products. That's important, not that we receive anything we don't, but it's enough where he'll come back. We had Hunter House hamburgers one day, not the greatest for our waistlines. We had Mexican food, and we pledge again, thanks in part to, well, half the credit goes to Parks Commission, that we'll hold these again this year, starting in May, and I think you'll enjoy it. The trucks, as you know, are at the end of the park's driveway. We wish we could have it right where the library patrons park, but I don't think Clara Bohr would appreciate that. <laughs> we had an event at Orchard Mall honoring our veterans, and again, in collaboration with the Parks Commission, I think they did most of the work, but that was held at Orchard Mall probably in November, and it was just such a nice event seeing all these veterans who were honored and feeded by Chief Patton and Chief Flynn and others. Henry Ford Access Road, that road has been built now, north off of 14 Mile, west of Drake, extremely important to, to the public. Because if ever the Henry Ford entrance off of Maple and Drake, west of, west of Drake, were closed down, what would happen? How would emergency vehicles access Henry Ford Hospital? Concerned by residents, Traffic, and you can't blame residents living near that road. Will it be loud? Will it be noisy? Will there be dust? Will there be parting? Will there be people drinking? And we assured them that that would not occur. There was a concern that people would use that road, traveling west on 14 Mile, turning right into the emergency road, and then try to head out to 15 Mile, but mm -hmm. residents have heeded that admonition, no, no through traffic. I don't know if any lives have been saved because, fire, because the ambulances now can enter off a 14 mile, but clearly a hospital like Henry Ford Hospital, one of the jewels of West Bloomfield, the largest employer in West Bloomfield, access has to be available and, and we on the board and our staff made it happen and we're very proud that that had occurred. Roundabout, another roundabout's coming and that's on Maple and Middle Belt. People like roundabouts as long as they don't live near them. <laughs> so roundabouts do move traffic. The severity of an accident is less, and you'll see the work will begin probably in one month. And Maple Road, unfortunately, between Middle Belt and, and Knollwood will be closed for three or four months. Friendship Circle Walk. Three years ago, we were approached by Friendship Circle. Friendship Circle had held its, their annual walk, and either people would meet at the Jewish Center or at Temple Israel, but they needed to meet at Town Hall because Maple Road was under construction. And we, we partnered with them, we've collaborated with them, and now they want to come back, and we said absolutely, Chief Patton is a miracle worker. He makes sure that everybody's safe and he has his officers deployed because you never know what can occur when there's a large gathering. But we are proud again to host the Friendship Circle annual walk. Our, our art fair, the annual art fair, the fine Orchard Lake art fair, again will take place this July. We hope you can visit on Saturdays and on Saturday and Sunday. A water bill. 
No increase this year. So although there are people who tell me I'm all wet, at least their water bills are not increasing. New developments, nearing the end, West Bloomfield is nearly fully built. The, the plots, the parcels that are left for commercial development or housing developments oftentimes have unusual configurations. But we have a project, a project, 209 homes, Balmoral, Haggerty Road, just south of Wanna Lake Road. Gary Shapiro is a developer. He lives in West Bloomfield. He cares about West Bloomfield. We're going to be able to provide housing to 209 families, high quality housing. Other developments include West Trail, which is on the south side of Maple near Halstead. And we have our first apartment building to be constructed, and as long as I can remember, and that's a 192 unit, four story apartment complex called Town Court. And it's behind Panera on west side of Orchard Lake Road. So I think you'll enjoy that apartment. We're talking about high, high class luxury apartments. Maccabi Games are returning to West Bloomfield on August 4th through August 9th. And also Parks Commission, we wish we could take credit for all that they do. But their Splash Park is opening probably early, spring, in spring. And that Splash Park will be a great splash in the community. We expect it to draw people. It'll be a destination site. And it also gives our residents pride in what we offer here. Oh, in closing, I would say that the seven members of the Township Board were honored to serve you. This is a great position where we can help the community. We are members of the community. We care about the community. It's just our honor and privilege to be here. Thank you. Thank you.